for some reason I was I think confident that the answer would be positive <laughs> because of the chemistry that was already going on I mean we we were hanging out together we used to go to the library I mean go to class to study together in the evening <clears throat> so uh, for me I wasn't I wasn't going to take a no <laughs> I was actually expecting a yes so and lucky enough that's what came <laughs> meanwhile I was his friend I didn't love him <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he always says I pretend when I say that I never like loved him to wow. be in a relationship with him but he loved his personality I loved the person he was but I didn't have a romantic feeling towards him people always refuse when I say that My name is Elisha Kababu. I am a husband and a father of two uh, kids. Uh, my first daughter is called Sela. Uh, the second one is called Cindy. Yeah, so I am a pastor, public speaker, musician, a piano coach. Yeah, that's all I do. Yeah. And I am Dorcas Mave, wife to Elisha Kababu. Yeah, and I'm also a mother, definitely she's a father, I'm a mom. <laughs> <laughs> a mother to Sela and Cindy, and I'm not Kenyan, I'm a Congolese, and I am a fashion designer, and a worship leader as well. Well, uh, we were in campus. I was in Pan Africa Christian University. Then I decided to transfer my credits to Africa International University in Karen. Uh, it was during that time I was coming from the library, and then I see this melanin, melanin girl, you know, walking directly, I mean, straight to me, and I'm like, Oh my goodness, <laughs> this girl is so beautiful, you know. And from that time, I was like, planning on how to get her. So I became a worship leader in our campus and I elected and then she was elected as the secretary. So I used to, you know, create meetings that are not there, you know. I need to meet the secretary urgently, you know, there's something we need to discuss. <laughs> so that's how our friendship and our love story began. Yeah, yeah and I would go with a notebook to note down the things my leader wants us to discuss for the worship team. Then I'll realize we're just the two of us, the rest of the mm -hmm. leadership members are not there. And it didn't hit me at first that there was anything going on. Yeah, because I wasn't expecting anything to happen between myself and my worship team leader. So <laughs> yeah, we were all in Africa International University where I was doing bachelor's in science, of science in entrepreneurship and he was in theology, yeah. So I knew him before, like many years back, because they used to be in this group called Kabasa, where they used to sing with his brother so and the sister, who we lived, we were neighbors with their cousins who are my friends, so they would come often to their place. So I knew them from a distance. So after years I met his, his sister at a funeral and I asked, where are your brothers? I no longer see them. And she says, see, they're in your school. He's in your school, Elisha is in your school. So I'm like, ah, okay. I look for him on Monday, I'm going to say hi. So I went and met him and said, hi Elisha. Then I was like, how do you know my name? I'm new here and I didn't know he noticed me that time. So he joined the worship team, we did projects together. He was a cool guy, really nice. He used to dress so well, smelled so nice. <laughs> and those things that you're praying, I was single, so I like, Lord, if I could get something close to him, I'd be satisfied. But it didn't hit me, it could be him, you know? So I wasn't like planning for him. But everyone that surrounded me just kept saying, they even went further calling me Mrs. Kababu, 
without even us starting to date. So I was so clueless. I didn't know anything. Yeah, but he was a really nice guy. He used to carry himself well. Mm. I loved the fact that um, I think my personality is um, a bit introverted and laid back. But every time I saw her, she had this big smile, you know, loving on everyone. She was all over, in short. <laughs> like she was, I almost thought that she was friends to everyone. You know, so I loved that bit about her, that she was quite social and, uh, yeah. I was looking to marry a friend, somebody that was close to me and that the years that we spent in campus, we became so close. Even, I wasn't thinking about marrying her initially. Of course I had noticed her and how beautiful she is and how social, I loved all her, and the, the whole of her personality, you know. You know, but, um, um, so I was dating, actually, there's a time I was dating, actually, and uh, <laughs> my, my ex used to come to campus, you know, and we used actually, she used to attend our worship services and all these things. Yeah, but uh, I mean, at some point I realized, um, really, this is what I want. Um, uh, not that the other person was a bad person, uh, but I kind of feel like I, I, like there was blending between me and her. And I mean, then I, I made the move. <laughs> So yeah, he was dating. I knew the girl, I knew the lady. And me, I didn't have plans to come in and interfere or anything. I had had my own shares of relationship. And I've been, I had been in a relationship that lasted for like five years. And it just broke up. I was left. So that has been like two years after I had been single. And honestly, I wasn't ready to like get into a relationship with somebody who didn't know what they wanted or didn't want to, to marry. So during that period, we got really close because being in campus, you know, you have those shared university courses. So we also, apart from serving in the worship team, we shared some units that were university unit, units. And I was the only girl that I used to be in their group where we did assignments together. And it used to be really fun. Like I liked spending time with them, him and some other pastors, <laughs> friends of his. <laughs> So it used to be fun. We'd even stay up to late night doing those assignments and stuff. Then I would walk home because we lived on the campus at the moment. At the moment, so uh, by the time he was asking me out, I'd shared like a lot about my life with him because he became so close. He was like very close to me. So I remember I'd started sh to telling him that uh, there are so many guys on my case. I am getting confused. I don't know who I'm going to settle for. And I needed guidance. <laughs> 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 I needed his help. So I was like, there's this one, there's this one. And the, most of them were pastors. I think they just seen me and they're like, this one will be a very good pastor's wife. But me personally, I never wanted to be a pastor's wife because they come from a pastor's home. And it's not like I have the best father, the best mother. They are not busy for us the way other pastors are. So I didn't want to be a pastor's wife because of poverty. You know, pastors <laughs> didn't have money. So <laughs> that aspect, it was something I didn't want. And then having to leave your space for people to come in. In as much as I was a people's person, I also didn't want that for me, for myself. But I didn't know that's where God was leading me. So when he, he knew, I told him there's this one, there's that one, there's this one. He actually disqualified somebody because he had tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> but no, it's not like he has a problem with a tattoo, but he had to tell me that you see those course. tattoos and stuff. You know, he's a pastor and I was looking up to him. I'm like, I didn't know he was coming right after that. So he just said we were chatting and then he told me, once you are done vetting all those guys on your line, I'll be at the end of the line waiting for you. <laughs> and I was like, that's such a bad joke. I can't lose a friend like this. Because, <laughs> you know, I need a guy who's my friend, who's not after me. So now mm. this one is also like coming after me. And I was like, you know what, let's just sleep. I will talk in the morning. 
Yeah, so I I thought it was <laughs> a joke. Then yeah. I w I went to school and we were working in the same building as for scholarship, work scholarship. And he was upstairs, I was downstairs. And during, we were chatting and he was telling me actually he meant everything he said, that he really likes me. And that's just, my phone fell from my hands. <laughs> and the people I was with in the office were like, Dorcas, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Let me go to the bathroom. And then on my way out, I see him coming from up. I literally turned and went back to the office because I didn't know how to face this new guy anymore. He was my friend. Now all of a sudden he's changed. So I didn't know how to address that. And I told him, give, him, give me three days, give me some days, I'll get back to you. For some reason, I was, I think, confident that the answer would be positive <laughs> because of the chemistry that was already going on. I mean, we, we were hanging out together. We used to go to the library. I mean, go to class to study together in the evening. <clears throat> so uh, for me, I wasn't, I wasn't going to take a no. <laughs> I was actually expecting a yes. So, and lucky enough, that's what came. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was his friend. I didn't love him. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he always says I pretend when I say that I never like loved him to wow. be in a relationship with him but he loved his personality I loved the person he was but I didn't have a romantic feeling towards him people always refuse when I say that so he was too confident yet me I went to God I was like God I don't love this guy with the love the romantic love wow. how can I be in a relationship with somebody I don't have the romantic love for because remember when I told him to give me some days on the first day when I went home and I prayed God didn't even wait for me to finish praying he just told me Elisha like loudly audibly like Elisha, I'm like, Lord, there's this one, there's this one, there's this one. It's like, Elisha. Like, there was no room for discussion. And I'm like, okay, confirm for me something. Because, you know, when you have a relationship with God, you know how you communicate with him. I'm like, okay, fine. I think I need a confirmation because I don't want to mess on this one. Because I was 22 at the moment. So I'm like, I don't want to have, uh, to miss on this one. I don't think I want to do all over relationship stuff and things just don't work. And he said, Elisha, I slept, I had a dream, Elisha. So I wake up, I have the Elisha, but I don't have the feelings. So I'm like, wow. how am I supposed to handle this? And he said, you go and say yes. After that, the feelings would come. Because I love relying on God's word more than anything. I went on and called him and we had a meeting and we sat and talked. I asked him so many questions for nothing because I already knew what I was going to say at the end. Mm. And I just told him at the end of it all, when he finished answering, I said, okay, I'm in then, let's do this thing. And it's after that, that now I was madly in love. Like I was like, it's like I can't survive without talking to him, without seeing him. And it was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that's how it <laughs> went on. <laughs> um, as I had said earlier, mm. I think for, I don't know, for, for some strange reason, I was almost sure that Dorcas would give me a yes. And I think it's because not necessarily that God spoke to me audibly, but there was an intuition inside me like, the, you, see, you see that inner knowing that uh, this is my girl, you know, and uh, so I think I, I wasn't, I, my confidence was not hinged on, oh, she's fallen for me or I have better qualities than other men. I think my confidence was that in a He kind of did, he had better qualities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the confidence <laughs> really came from within, I was like. I think she's meant for me. You know, the way you see somebody and you know that you're supposed to do life together and then you see them and it just clicks. So that's, so when she said yes, I was like, of course, really excited. <coughs> uh, but I already knew <laughs> that she would say yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> one i love looks so i really wanted somebody that when i'm out there with him he gets noticed like a handsome like it's evident he's looking good you know that was something i really wanted of course i do want somebody shorter than me yeah that would be a bit weird for me though there are people who don't mind but for me it will be weird <laughs> and mostly somebody who knows god yeah but let me not lie on my list out outward looks <laughs> was important because they can't imagine somebody has made you angry and his face is also making you angry you know <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to fall in love with it. I want you to have a face that I will smile at. I'll still look at it and be happy with the face because we can't be fighting two things. Let's let's fight issues but not about your face. Yeah, so I want it to be confident on how you look about so I don't have to hide you. I don't have, you know, for me that was very important because I want to be secure and also you to feel good, not to feel like I'm ashamed of you or anything. So for me, the looks actually came in handy because I was like, okay, that first one is okay. I can handle the rest. <laughs> <laughs> but also I had reached the point where by I knew me. I knew what I wanted. I knew what he can handle and what will be mm -hmm. too much for me to bear in that moment. Though when you meet, it's not like you get to know somebody immediately everything, but at least what is presented on the table at first is something I can handle so that at least even if something else comes later, it's not overwhelming that I started bearing things from the beginning instead of being uh okay with things so it had to be something i could handle so somebody at least who's clean that is something i can handle whose language is clean who has a heart for god you know those are things i could handle somebody who doesn't mind being in ministry because i knew in as much as i'm doing entrepreneurship i knew i'm called into ministry as well but not as a pastor because i'm not a pastor so someone that is okay like we have things in common that i could be able to handle Apart from that I don't think I had any list of where he comes from or anything. Yeah, that was like my main thing. Mm. For some reason, I love dark skin. His mom is dark. <laughs> my, I think it's because my mom is dark. So, <laughs> uh, so I mean, I saw that, and then I saw her leadership qualities. I was observing because, I mean, again, surrounding her on campus were so many other women, you know. So, but she stood out because I loved her qualities. I loved how she used to take care of her small sisters because I was observe everything on campus because their parents were also living on campus. I'm like, oh, this, this would actually make a good mom, you know? I love, I, I mean, again, I loved how she was social and outgoing and the confidence and all these things. I loved all those things. They stood out for me and, and I mean, she, 100% carried everything that I was looking for in a woman. She still does. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so, on the same day that I went and said yes, uh, he, before I said yes, he, I was like, so how long is this relationship going to last? Where do you see us go? And he said, if you say yes now, that by the end of the year, that was 2017, it was towards the end of the year in 2016. By the end of the year 2017, we should be married. And I was like, wait, what? Just <laughs> like that? I was like, yes. So two weeks into the relationship, he asks me, have you told your parents? I'm like, no, it's just two weeks. <laughs> I haven't told anyone. He's like, then you should. Because I want you to know that I'm actually in for this. And my mom was not in the country. And you know, um, my dad, we have a very strong relationship. And there's no way I could go to him with such a news because he didn't want me to get married like that soon. He wanted me to continue with my master's first and then I'll maybe get married. So I told him my mom is not around. He said, then give her a call. 
I'm like, you can't wait. Like, no, you have to let her know. So I tried looking for my mom. She wasn't, I couldn't get her. So I left her a text saying, uh, mom, there's a guy, he's Elisha. They knew him because you see, being in the worship team, at some point, my mom was an, unwell. So the worship team came to visit us at our house. And of course, they knew Elisha as the worship leader. Mom had attended services in the school chapel and he's, she's seen him preach and lead like they would meet on campus you know such things and yeah so they knew him so when i said she i said and the guy is elisha and she told me okay i'll get back to you uh, two days later she called they were talking with my dad and she said give dorcas the phone and she told me i heard what you said i've prayed about it and it's okay I was like, okay, wait a minute. There's no opposition <laughs> in this thing. <laughs> yeah, so it yeah. was, and she said she's coming. Once she comes, she's going to have a talk with my dad. Yeah. Actually, Dorcas is uh, the only lady. Okay, I told my dad initially about another lady, but uh, I don't know what he's, even my mom. And they were like, eh, Elisha, are you sure about They They're already seeing red flags. I also knew that surely this is not it you know but for the first time when i told my dad this lady i even sent the photo she even even came home she was she came to church and all that hey dad was like now now we are talking you know <laughs> yeah so i told them and they received it so well and supported me all the way Okay, on campus, there are guys who wanted this girl. <laughs> so, I definitely created some, I don't know, short-term or long-term enemies. There are people who are definitely looking to get married to her. You know, and I was out of the scene because they actually some of them that we served closely knew that I was actually yeah, dating. Girlfriend. You know, yeah. there was a girl. So, um, so they knew, ah, Dorcas is, is free. still free. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my relationship, you know, I, we broke up with, uh, with, uh, with uh, that lady and then now I asked her out because I knew that really this is what I it want. It was like almost immediately yeah. according to what people saw. But then yeah. I think they had had their issues for some time, yeah. which I don't know how long it was. So some of the people were like, eh, Elisha is using you as a rebound. He's been dumped and he's just <laughs> looking for a girl who will accommodate him he's going to leave you you know all those things came up some people were like ah Dorcas has interfered into Elisha's relationship and that's why they've broken up you know mm -hmm. some like it was a lot going on some even went some people we knew who are older even went to Elisha and gave him my whole life story like a mama went and told him that this Dorcas is a guy's person. She's always out with men. She's always, which it's not a lie, but it's not in the way she was putting it. Because my most of my friends were guys, and most of them were people we did mission together. So after mission, we'd go to a restaurant and eat. You know, mechoka, you're tired, you eat, you hang out together. So she went kind of tarnishing my name to him. Mm -hmm. told him about the guy I was dating before and so many things but now the thing is before that I had like opened up my heart and shared everything mm -hmm. with him so by the time he's calling me to say because he had gone to take lunch in that place and the person used to serve then now they were saying everything so he calls me he's like and who is so and so I'm like, you remember the person I told you about, the <laughs> guy, this man, woman was like this and this to them. And so what happened every, so by the time I was like reminding him, he was like, oh, okay, it's that. So that like kind of saved me a lot because I already shared my life with him. So he knew, so it was like, ah, so this woman had just her own intentions, mm. which mm. were not really right. But for me, my siblings were in for it. 
my close circle, I had like four friends, they were so happy about it because they would tease me every time about him. So now finally when I told them, they're like, we always saw it coming, but not everybody. Most people, like the ladies who wanted him and stuff, they were disappointed. So it was hard until we had to do a day of intentionally walking on campus together so that they can actually see this thing is happening. You know, it's not because we used to be like Chinia Maji, <laughs> but now we're like, you know what, we are tired. So let them see and just have something concrete to talk about now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 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 no, I <no> <laughs> There was, I mean, there was literally nothing. <laughs> Me, I just went to town, I got a good ring. And then we were in, uh, on campus, I was sharing a house with like two, three guys. And then so, um, so I was alone in the house. So I asked her to come to the house and then we were having a chat. And then I went to my knee and put on the ring. No, he skipped details. So we had moved, cause you know, remember we said we were staying on campus with my parents. My parents, uh, my dad and mom are pastors and we came to Kenya like years back. And so on campus, before AIU became AIU, it was next. So pastors used to stay on campus with their families. Mm -hmm. So now it's reached the time now, it's a university, we needed to vacate. So we left, we moved out to our place. So this day, me, I was like clearing with school. So he told me, come on campus, we need to meet and talk. So I came, but he was not there. So I waited for him for over three hours. I was so tired and angry. So I wanted to go home and then he comes, he says, uh, please take me to the house. I need to pick something, then I escort you to the stage so you can get a matatu. So I went, we reached there, then we sat in the sitting room because they had a sitting room. And he just goes on his knees. He gives me a ring and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing I ever expected as a proposal. So he gave me the ring. In fact, I wore the ring on my right hand this side so that nobody could even notice what's going on. And I'm like, just like that is like, yeah. Then he's like, hey, maybe we will do a proposal, a good event later on. But that never happened. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I was okay with it though. I didn't have issues with it. Because also I'm not the kind that wants to put everything out there. Yeah, though I love parties and stuff, but I don't like putting like everything out there. Mm. Um, I think she'll talk about her side. Yes, we did a pre-wedding. We, we invited her and uh, our best couple and the Congolese uh, uh, team. Uh, because, I mean, it's a Kenyan culture to do pre-wedding. I mean, you cannot do a wedding without doing a pre-wedding. So on my side, we did a pre-wedding and it was quite successful. We did it in Machakos, in my, my, my dad's church. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah, they did. But on their really. side, they prepare the lady like they give her everything that she needs. They they don't do rural show. Yeah. So, so for for a pre wedding, uh, they did the pre wedding. That was totally their thing to do. We we just went for it. But now from my side, now we did something like a send off party, where my friends came, the Congolese community came. They also came, and. It, we did it together it was like two weeks two weeks before the wedding yeah mm. two weeks before the wedding we did it at our place in uh, so we went for the diary and she was hey, the, the court was was, <laughs> was a lot of money you know <laughs> so there was this has to had to keep on going out you know to negotiate you know we were sitting in the sitting room and then they're telling us oh the girl is actually in uganda so you need to give <laughs> money right now for her she was in the bedroom <laughs> you need to give uh, pay her air ticket so that she can come otherwise she's not coming so the first thing we had to do is to give money i can't remember how much i think it was 20 or 30k for her air ticket so that first she can come you know and then she came and then you know now the negotiations began i don't want to mention the figure it was it was a lot, but we had to negotiate at, le at least to bring it uh, 
a bit low, yeah. And uh, yeah, traditionally, actually, I don't know if it's in the Kenyan culture because I'm not very sure. But once you do the rural show and pay your diary, you're supposed to like go home with your wife. You know, this uh, uh, wedding, uh, white wedding, is actually a Zungu thing. You know, so but that day, so I was even telling her, you know, now you're my wife, you're supposed to go home, you know. And they actually, the parents were saying, you know, now you're Elisha's wife, you can actually go, you don't need a church wedding. You know, when you get the blessings of the parents. And, and I think it's a thing because some people have so much pressure from the society that, you know, I must do a white wedding. You know, if you don't have the money, I mean, I mean, even meet on, I mean, do the traditional wedding, agree with the parents, receive the blessing on Sunday, call your pastor on, on church, let them bless you. Because something people don't know is that people waste a lot of, like, especially the money that you raise in the pre-weddings, you can use that to begin your life. As we, we had, uh, we, the money we, I think we spent almost 90% of our money in the wedding. Because you know we are both pastors' kids and the wedding was open. We wanted a private wedding. We couldn't get a private wedding exactly. because both sides, they have people who must come. So you have to feed all these people. It was quite, it was quite kind, kind too much yeah. and a lot, yeah. But on the, like, the most important thing is the traditional one where parents agree the dowry is paid and then have people of God just pray for you. If yeah. you don't have all that money, if you don't want to spend, you don't have to. Yeah. yeah, have them pray for you, but not because, you know, he's a pastor, we are pastor's kids. That pressure. So we had to do the church, which wasn't bad, but we would have saved more from doing that big reception mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. But it was fun anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and your wedding is your wedding. Your wedding is not for everyone. Do what you want to do. <laughs> oh, he sang. He sang for me. So meanwhile, all this time, <laughs> Kumbi has been recording a song. So coming to the reception area, he sang the song. And I was shocked. I was like, Wow, but when I'm shocked, it kind of doesn't show on my face. I'm not like so excited. I'm just blunt, like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it was really nice. The words were nice. He even went further to have Lingala words in the song and French. So it's kind of, it felt nice. Yeah, and something fun happened because it was during the re-election period. So we didn't go for honeymoon because like, you are not sure about the security of the nation. So after the wedding, we actually went to our house, which we had prepared. And so we went home only to realize we didn't buy tokens. <laughs> 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 and we didn't know where to get the caretaker. It's already late. <laughs> and then there was no food to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here and we're wondering, oh, what do we do? Our phones didn't even have charge. So thank God it was his dad and his friend who drove us to the house. So after we reached home, we told him, no, there's no token and we don't even have the meter number. We don't know anything so, and there's no food. So they drove us to a supermarket. I was still in my dress. I had changed from the gown to another dress for the reception. So I was wearing that dress and his hoodie and then him, he had his suit, I think. And I think I removed coat. my coat and and half you. got you were the one no no i had your hoodie i took oh. your hoodie from the bag okay so because my clothes hadn't even reached mm -hmm. so i just had the bag that had small things for honeymoon and i didn't have clothes my bag had mm. hadn't come my parents are supposed to bring so we went to a uh, supermarket and bought food <laughs> 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 and people at the counter looking at us like where this one's coming <laughs> from it was around 9 p.m or 10. We bought and went back to the house and ate in the dark and started unwrapping the gifts. Yeah, that's what it was. It was so unexpected <laughs> in <Yeah>. the dark. <laughs> <laughs>